Welcome back. So if you are a business analyst or anyone who works in Excel with the data, this particular video is right for you because in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can quickly, easily, and efficiently clean up your data so that you can create this amazing, awesome report that you can give it to your boss and he'll be happy to have them for you so that way you can get easily get promoted right that's the goal because you want your boss to think you are amazing you are this excel guru that knows every single thing that's the goal right that way anytime a new project comes along he's gonna be the one thinking i'm gonna give you that particular project because you are my guy so Without any further ado, let me show you how you can easily clean your data because once you have your data clean, that's a starting point for you to create a clean report so that you can give it to your boss. All right, let's go. All right, first off, we're going to start off with removing some duplicate entries from your data. I have this very simple customer name and email in here. I have two emails that are duplicated. And you're thinking like, Mark, this is easy. There's like a maybe eight records. You could easily do that, right? But the principle that I'm going to show you, it's gonna help you create by removing these duplicates the same way I'm gonna do it for these nine records. You could do it for hundreds upon thousands and thousands of records. And which will make your life easier from speaking from experience when I used to do this, I get this ton boatload of uh, this Excel file data and I have to mine, like literally had to pull my hair out trying to figure out. And then I discovered this quick and easy way. I'm like, holy cow, it saved me hours upon hours, right? In this custom function, trying to figure out how to do this. And it was like, damn, I wish I knew that before. So if you're in that position, you're like, I just want to remove these duplicates so I have a clean slate so that I can work forward. Let's show you how to do that. So I have, once again, just the eight rows of data. I already know where the duplicates are. So you have this one, Allison. We have Allison. We have Charlie. We have Charlie. But they're all in the different places, right? So what I want to do is I want to remove these or this, this could be anywhere, anywhere, right? So what I'll do is I'll do the easy, the lazy way to do it is select the whole sheet. Boom. And then I'm going to go over to the data tab right over here. And then from there, you'll be surprised if you got the newest version of Excel, you have this option available, which will be remove duplicate. Most people, what they really do is when they get to this, they just click OK. I don't want you to do that because when you do that, it kind of throws the data all over the place. So what I would recommend is since I already have two columns, the columns that I care about is the most, and that will be the email. That's the only thing that I want to check off on. So in your case, it might be different. You might be in a budgeting or might be a week or a date or whatever your unique uh, column is. Check that off just to make sure that particular column doesn't have a duplicate. All right. So I'm just going to click OK. Boom. And then there you go. Out of the eight, it removed two of them. Now I'm left with six, which is a unique record. Now I can move forward working with this thing. All right, so now we're going to move right along. We got another example in which we have this sales data. But guess what? We have sale IDs, but some of the sales amount is missing. Well, how are we going to work with this crap? And if you have gotten this, you know exactly how frustrating it is. But right now, I just got seven rows. But once you got thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of rows, you're like, oh, my God, I just want to pull my hair. Because you exactly don't know where the blank or the missing data for the sales amount is. In your case, it could be some other number, right? I'm just throwing it out there. So the easiest way to, for you to filter out all the blanks which means it will show you all the blanks. So you just select the rows and delete them and that's that. So what are we gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the data tab and then we're gonna select the first row, which will be this. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna go over to the filter and click on it. And then it's gonna put a filter. 
And you're like, wow, Mark, you put a filter on it. Whoopity do. Yes, it is a whoopity do. Because the next step is just filtering out the blanks. So here it is. So I'm going to uncheck select all and filter out just the blanks. And then click OK. And guess what happens? We got just the blanks and we can select all of them. So right click. So what I did was, in case you're brand new to Excel, select over here, select all these rows, right click, and then we are just going to delete them. And they're gone. And now, if we unfilter them, select them all, and guess what? All those magic things are gone. And now we have clean data. How exciting is that, right? And now we can move forward on your report to build this amazing sales report that you want. All right, now we're going to look at how to format dates. If you ever got a file in Excel that the dates are not the prettiest. So you got this horrendous format and you're like, how the hell am I ever going to work with this crap? Because this is all over the place and make it worse. So what I'll do is I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, because when you see it, you're like, Oh, Mark, I know that happened to me just the other day or the last week or the last month. I'm like so frustrated with it. Had to manually do this crap. So now you won't have to. So let's just say I copy this exact same thing because depending on how they put the date in here, sometimes it doesn't take the value that it needed to be. And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you are done with this frustration. So for example, the simple way is what? You select the whole thing, right click, Format cell, right? That's, I'm showing you in the long way. And then what do you do? You go over to the date. That's a pretty standard way, right? And you just say, let's just say this one, right? And then you're just gonna click on, okay. And nothing happens. <laughs> it's crap. It looks just like the one, this one. Nothing changes, right? So you're like, um, I guess I'm gonna have to manually do this. Uh, another way would be this. And that will be just get the value. Actually, I'll do the other way first. So text, which is in Excel, it's just a formatting function that you can literally format it to anything that you want it in any format you want it. So parentheses, whatever value you want it to format it. So I'm gonna put this over here, this value. And then I want it to format it to be Y, 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 just for the hell of it. You know what? Let me just do the other way around. So it's going to be month, month, dash, and day, day, because we're doing the US based time. Yeah, obviously, you can do it based on your own little currency, whatever. And Y, 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 which means year in a four digit format. And then we're going to click on close parenthesis and done. And guess what? We got date. All right. That's perfect. Now we scroll this down. There we go. But the problem is. We got this little fucker <laughs> that didn't get formatted, right? That's another problem. So let's take it one step further, another formula. This time we use the text formula, which you can see here. So it's just the word. Uh, I'm just gonna put this over here, right here for you. Copy it, next, come back here. So it's literally this particular formula that we use. So it's text and I'll put another space in here, another column. So it'll be easier for you. And don't worry if you are interested in getting this file for whatever reason, you can download it from the link below. I will leave a link for you to make it easier. So that's that. And this is a formula for this to get this, but we got this little troublemaker here that didn't get a format. So what's the other solution? Oh my God, right? So let's find out. So what I'll do is this. I'm gonna put it here, call it equal sign, and I'm gonna use the function, the Excel function called value, which would be this. And then I'm gonna get the value of this and then do this. Now this gives me the digital formatted, the four digit number or the six digit number, depending on the date. And then I'm just gonna copy this by just left-clicking on it, 
If it doesn't go all the way through, then I'm just going to drag it, and there it is. And you're like, this is great, but these are numbers. They're not human readable. So let me just do this first over here. So that way, when you hit this, you know exactly what to do. So this is the formula called value. So now, if I go over here, select all of these, and then rather than doing the right-click thing, I'm on the home page since this is already over here. Under the tab where it says general, I'm just going to pick, let's just say, short date. And here it is. We got a short date. Awesome. The problem is we got this here. So we can... Sh Rest assured, there are one clear-cut way to help you solve this data cleaning problem for if you have dates, which I showed you how to do it in the previous one section about how to use filters. If you don't remember, let me show you real quick. So I'm going to select this, go to the data, go to filters, and then I'm going to put a filter over here, and I'm going to say only show me the one that has this particular text that says pound sign value which means it has absolutely nothing only going to show me and if you have a handful of these you could just literally plug in the dates in there and that's that as compared to thousands upon thousands upon thousands right that's that or if you want to get a little nifty you could do that as well like go to over here and then you could just say do all of these to be periods make your life easier, I suppose. So all of them in the same way. And now you can work with this if you wanted to, right? If you don't, your choice, right? But I personally would go with this option, which means just filter it and then literally just plug it in manually and that's that. So that's the easy way to do this. And this will help you out a lot. All right, so now we're gonna look at how you can combine two different columns to create into one column. So let's say you have this data in which you got the product code, the customer's name, which is the first name, and you have the last name and you combine it in here. And then at the same time, you want the names to be with spaces for whatever reason, let's say, right? I'll show you how to do that, it's very simple. So what do you do is if you wanna combine the two names, you could just say, First name, whichever column that falls upon. And then we're going to use the, uh, not the whole thing, but and percent space. And then we're going to put a little space in between. And then end that coat. And then we're just going to say C2, which should be the name too. And that becomes the first name and the last name. We're going to drag this down. And there you go. So you have the full name in there. I know it's very simple, right? It's very simple. And then guess what you got to do? Rinse and repeat the process for the other part if you want a space with just the first name in it. So there's a space in there if you wanted to. But for some reason, I don't know why, but if in case you wanted to, you have it there, right? So that's how you concatenate or combine two columns and make it into one all right so now we're gonna wrap this bad boy up with conditional formatting so let's say you got this sales report and you want to know how many people are below the average and how many people are above the average and these are the people that are doing great but the below average needs a little bit of a helping right so we need to coach them around a little bit so i'm like hey let's do this buddy so we can get your numbers up so how do we identify if you have data like this and once again this is a simple data you may have thousands upon thousands and thousands of data right so you could do the same exercise so what do you want to do is you want to select the whole thing so i'm just going to select these and then under the home tab you want to go to the conditional formatting right over here then you want to select highlight cell rules and then this time around what we want to do is we could do greater than and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say anybody who has a score of sale amount of thousand, 
They're doing amazing and only show me that. So we're gonna put them to be our superstars. So here it is. So we got three of these candidates, right? However, if we don't want that, we could just say, hey, do the reverse. Show me all of the ones that are below 1,000. And now we have this green and red thing, right? So that's like a little confusing. Like, I don't want both rules. I just want one. So what you can do is you can go over here where it says manage rule under the conditional formatting. We can go over here and then we got two of these rules. And from here, we can just modify from here or we can just simply delete them if you don't like them. You could just say, if you want to say, we want to edit this one, right? For example, I can select this, click on edit and then put in the criteria that I want it. And that's it and the color, so on and so forth. And I can even go further, like different color, bold and italicized, whatever kind of thing that you can work with that. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and say, uh, I only want to see the people who actually need help because superstars, I don't care about them because they're doing amazing, right? So I'm going to delete this particular rule and then apply it. And guess what happens? We only got the people who are doing not that great. They are below the average. And then what we can do is we can sort them by ascending and descending order so that way we know which one we need to target first so we could do that by literally select the whole thing then we're gonna go over here where it says a sort filter and then we're gonna say smallest to the largest and then there we go and then this could be larry this could be john this could be becky this could be mike and this right here is Mark, of course, right? Superstar. <laughs> so this is how you do conditional formatting. It is so easy.